that the church will rise as the highest of all the mountains and saviors will be raised in the church to deal with the world system and let it be now we need to have a national focus we don't have to lose this ambition or else we work against the great commission they are equipped in righteousness unless our righteousness exceeds those who just know abc and surprise others to do but they don't do unless we see that we pray for god to raise right ministers in our nations we pray for god to raise right tax collectors we pray for god to raise right security agents they are bold and fearless standing your ground when the battle has been heated to such an extent that everyone is running away but we don't quit for we know no defeat the agenda to possess the nations. Welcome to an equipping center of the word and prayer on Pentecost hour. Stay tuned in. It's in my soul. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We are grateful to the Almighty God for yet another opportunity to come your way. Come your way with the unadulterated word of God. We are discussing bitterness, seed of resentment in the heart of men. Now we are talking about offense. Because we have said that bitterness is caused and it is caused by offense. Bitterness is caused by offense. And we have said that it is impossible that offenses should not come. So we said last week that sometimes for the sake of the glory of God. For the sake of the family. For the sake of the institution. For the sake of the future. Sometimes for the sake of the majority. You need to offend. But don't do that for your own self-aggrandizement. But do it for the sake of the future and an institution or a family. See, our belief system will always give rise to our conduct. What we believe will give rise to our conduct. Teachings, either by word or deed, have effect on hearers. Now, so the teachings, whether by word or deed, has effect on hearers and viewers, especially when it is coming from elders or leaders, because what they do and say become a tradition for others to follow. That is why Jesus cautioned that we always have to be careful of yeast. Matthew chapter 16, 5 to 7. And then I'll continue from 11 and 12. Matthew 16, 5 to 7. When they went across the lake, the disciples forgot to take bread. They forgot to take bread. Be careful, Jesus said to them. Be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees. They discussed this among themselves and said, It is because we didn't bring any bread. And so, let's jump to verse 11. Jesus had their discussion. And he wanted to at least correct them. Let them know that he's not talking about this that we put in bread. 
And so verse 11, how is it you don't understand that I was not talking to you about bread? Yes. Yes. Be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Then they understood that he was not telling them to guard against the yeast used in bread, but against the teaching of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And now, who knows? Say, one can say, one show, one who ye pan no more can hold them mum for a sea for any Saduki for no in church. He was just talking about the effect teachings of these strong sets have on the people, and so we always have to be careful of the yeast. Be careful of the yeast. If you have to stop it somehow, do it. Don't allow it to take charge over the entire door. So when you see the negative, that the negative effect of an action or inaction may have consequence on an organization, on a family, on yourself, and the future, you need to step in and set the record straight. Do it in the best way that you can. But you see, brothers and sisters, you can never say, I will not offend. And Listen, sometimes you have to say no to a benefactor. Let me repeat that. Sometimes you have to say no to a benefactor. He might have supported your education, but it doesn't mean you have to give yourself to him in response to his kindness. Fear God. She may be bringing in all the tithes, but that doesn't mean that you have to close your eyes on her evil character. You need to deal with that. Sometimes you need to say no to your superior. He may be your boss, but it doesn't follow that you should yield to his or her advances. Fear God. Sometimes you need to say no to a friend. You need to say no to a friend. When his or her evil communication or dealings or stands may corrupt your good morals. Fear God. See, brothers and sisters, even children are supposed to obey their parents in the Lord. So, when what their parents are saying is against the Lord's commands, the Bible wants children even to be on the side of God. You can never say, I will not offend anyone. The great Billy Graham once said this, and I quote, Billy Graham, Be attractive and winsome. Is somebody that uh, you are innocently beautiful. 
But do not compromise your convictions for the sake of popularity. If you're a leader, you'll be confused when you want to follow propriety. Shall we read together? Ready, go. Be attractive and winsome, but do not compromise your conviction for the sake of being popular. You need to say no to every ungodliness, no matter where it's coming from. You need to say no to every ungodliness, no matter where they are coming from. Now, let me remind you of Titus chapter 2. From verse 11. Titus 2 from verse 11. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. That same grace that gave birth to us, the Bible says that it teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passion. And to live self-controlled, upright, godly lives in this present age. It teaches us to say no to every ungodliness. In our daily walk with the Lord Jesus. We should remember as it were to draw the lines of resistance. Now set the boundaries clear. You know, tell yourself that as for this line, I will not cross. Don't let circumstances dictate to you as to what to do. Draw the lines. Set the boundaries clear and live within the bounds. Be a Christian. Hold your own spirit and don't let circumstances dictate to you. Don't indulge in your weakness. So, control your appetite. Control your appetite. Try. 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 Do not compromise your convictions. For the sake of pleasing men, you should say no. You should say no to all ungodliness. Now, if you say no to all ungodliness, no matter where it's coming from, then you should not say, I will never offend anyone. See, the promise of God could be transgenerational. The promise of God could be transgenerational. And if you entertain evil, you may cut it. You may cut it short. You have to be careful because God wants to bless you, your children and your children's children. God wants the business that you have started today to grow beyond you. But be careful to bring God into the business and into your home. Now we find teachings on ancestral curses much attractive than teachings on ancestral blessings. Now God wants to bless you. Hey, let's turn to Genesis 18, verse 18 and 19. I want you to pay close attention to this scripture. Now, let's pay close attention to this scripture. Abraham will surely become a great and powerful nation. 
and all nations on earth will be blessed through him. If we say Ampara Abraham beye oma eswa e ding na ni mu wo be shire wi ase amanyina. For I have chosen him so that he would direct his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just. Then the next word is so that the Lord will bring about for Abraham what he has promised him. Now me who know me you know say on shani ma and in if you fwa obedi ne tri say wuni a radi kwan so in ye trine any adi trine adi ade amadi what kano Abraham Huno Abano so his promise to him is that he's going to be a powerful nation. And all the nations of the earth will be blessed through him. And but for the promise to come to pass, he has to raise his children well. So that the Lord will bring about for Abraham what he has promised. So when some of his children are not living right, he should be able to say no to what they are doing. To stand against, discipline them because they may truncate the blessing. You should never say, I don't want to offend Isaac. Remind Isaac of the blessings of the Lord and what she should do to stay at a place where the providence of God can flow through him. Yes. Yes. But there's a bad example in scripture that I want to bring up. And because this man probably didn't want to offend, it cut short God's providence and blessing that was supposed to be transgenerational in his family. First Samuel chapter 2. We'll read a long passage for um, for the sake of clearer understanding. Uh, so I'll start from verse 27. Now a man of God came to Eli and said to him, This is what the Lord says. Did I not clearly reveal myself to your ancestors' family when they were in Egypt under Pharaoh? I chose your ancestors out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priests and to go up to my altar and burn incense and to wear an ephod in my presence. I also gave your ancestors' family all the food offerings presented by the Israelites. So because he wanted them to be priests, he also arranged that the people would even bring him them food. Na mi ye no Israel musu ya kwenye na mu se omedi me sofu na omo afori muti aso oshi afodi na onshi edusham na onshi asofutadi no menim na me the Israel for ja afodi ni na me ma weje fi yes why do you scorn my sacrifice and offering that I prescribe for my dwelling why do you honor your sons more than me by fattening yourself on the choice part of every offering made by my people Israel. Now I didn't see any mutiye ti akuma for the any medu aniya for the ya mashe se wamono na any ewo mitra bi anu suono na wudi wameni esneme se modi mi man Israel a yedi ni na mu adia edi kano a yene moho. Therefore. Uh, therefore means therefore as a result the god of israel declares this is what he's going to declare but originally he has said that he himself chose the family to serve him as priest but now he is going to change his mind 
ahenu no nyame asesa na dwene kra esanse owo butai bi ana wahye ewo wo ho nanso bribi si ye nti wasesa na dwene ewo ne opese oye no ho nti na o ka se enu nti but now the lord declares far be it from me those who honor me i will honor but those who despise me will be disdained god is saying that i chose your ancestors to serve me I made provision for your house what to eat. So I don't expect you to go into my sacrifice, the offering that is made for me. I don't expect you and your children to do that, to go into it and disturb that offering. So he says, now declares the Lord. Those who honor me, I will honor. But those who despise me, I will also despise. Now verse 31. The time is coming when I will cut short your strength and the strength of your priestly house. The strength of your priestly house. So that no one in it will reach old age. So I'll cut your strength. And your priestly house. So that no one in it will live to an old age. And you will see distress in my dwelling. Although good will be done to Israel, no one in your family, no one in your family line will ever reach old age. Now, say, who ye when you're coping, be ye Israel noa, a bema one who here and a dorsum. If we say, I could grab be in cow with you, every one of you that I do not cut off from seven at my altar, I will spare only to destroy your sight and sap your strength and all your descendants would die in their prime life may the lord cause this never to happen to any of us now but this time the children were still alive but listen 34 and what happens to your two sons hophni and phinehas will be a sign to you they will both die in the same day. Aye, ni ni a beba wo ma benu no so hofini ene fene hatu suo esencheni dakro wo benu ni na ebewu. I will raise up for myself a faithful priest who will do according to what is in my heart and mind. I will firmly establish his priestly house, and they will minister before my anointed one always. So he takes Eli's house from there, and then he says, I'm going to put another person's family there. Now, yes. yes. Then everyone left in your family line will come and bow down before him. And then this him was referring to Samuel, that small boy who came to live with Eli and his children for a piece of silver and a loaf of bread and plead, appoint me to some priestly office so I can have food to eat. When they were not content with the food that God has made provision for them, and they would rather eat from the Lord's table that which they were not supposed to eat, we said there is going to come a time that your descendants will even beg for a space in the priestly work so that they can even find some food to eat. But no one will appoint them. Now, it sounds like now, 
Mm. See, Eli's priestly line was cut short because of the behavior of his children okay. and his failure to decidedly discipline them. Eli, na sofu juma na wantu atu aswano, wotwa niti ya ewa ni mano ho, isanse, wantu miye nsi kete, anti ya ni mano, ewa ni boni anu See, the old man Eli tried to talk to his children, but that was not enough. It was not enough. Listen to how he went about doing it. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 22. Homa, yen shi senia, eli, o ye no, e wo samo homa edikain, eti mienu e imu edionu mienu elko. Now Eli, who was very old, heard about everything his sons were doing to all Israel, and how they slept with the women who served at the entrance of the tent of meeting. Na afe eli, Akura na oti adia ni ma diriye Israel ni na no ni sedi wone ema na wobeye shiye into madang ano edumano eda. Verse twenty three. So he said to them, now listen to you, Eli. Why do you do such things? I hear from all the people about those wicked deeds of yours. Now can't you hear one say? I didn't see. And I'm here, son, see me. Now, me see, when some money, if you're a man, you know, and no, my sons, the report I hear spreading among the lost people is not good. Debbie, Mamma, now, nothing can part, and I'm here, no, who ye, Mama, a rather minor form. If one person sins against another, God may mediate for the offender. But if anyone sins against the Lord, who will intercede for them? Now, is it time to be talking about philosophies? Na se ubiye ubi bonia onyango pa mbe pata mano na se ubiye urade bonia mai ana mbe pata mano efedi o ka enim disem. This is not time to question why. Why are you doing this? And give wise things that if someone has an issue with another, God may mediate for the fellow. If the person has an issue with God, who will do the mediation? Now, is it time to be talking about all this? And yes, he sir. should have been firmer in his resolve. At least he could have suspended these guys. He would have saved the priestly line. Huh? He would have saved that. But instead of being firmer, Probably he didn't want to offend these boys. And he lost the future and the priesthood. His descendants were cut off from serving God as priests. And <laughs> One day, Cephas made a statement. See, it is always good for someone to be sacrificed for the redemption of many. It is always good for Hophni and Phinehas to have been sacrificed so that the priestly line of Eli be Hmm. When Cephas realized that there was confusion and it may cause the displeasure of Rome because of how the people were praising Jesus Christ, then he made a suggestion. I will read the suggestion to you in John chapter 11, verse 50. The suggestion Cephas, the high priest at the time, who was also the leader of the council, gave. Ebra Kefa, now yes of Penny Nebreso, who knows him in Timmy Wase, Eba, or who's away, and fast him, Debbie, and Ray Romano, Niana Odi Tufuno, any. Let me start from 49, John 11 from 49. Then one of them, named Cephas, who was high priest that year, spoke up. You know nothing at all. Yes, Yohani Asempano, Etidubako, Efin, Yimu, Ediana, 
Enkron Eko. Chow se mi se na wo mu ba ku bi kefa odi sofu peni afinu mu no se won se mu de mu nim hwe. You do not realize that it is better for you that one man die for the people than the whole nation perish. Nan so mu nwe ne se eye ma mo se onipa ba ku bewu ama man no na man no nyina an sei. What he is saying is this. Ya all can ye. This statement is about Jesus. Yeah, okay, enough for Christ to whom. But he's trying to say that you spare the rod. You spoil the child. No, person what children say, who grow up, who be say about a little living, when not dealt with, can work itself through the whole do the entire do. Okay, and more like a two be say, and cross one shin here a bit to me a will ra and more than you know say no. So if this Jesus is going to be a problem. To the extent that Rome will come and destroy the whole of the Jewish nation, let's take him out. And he says, "Hi, yes, we obey your how they are my young. I'm a Rome for you now. I'm a be high you come here, and you're young in free way." So even history knows that it was this Cephas who masterminded the death of Christ. And to show you a part, not just say about some extra, say Cephas of Benino or no, and no dear new part, ma will come Christo. Because all of us. Who want to see anyone who suggested that Jesus should die as an enemy? Uh, but don't worry, because by his death we have bad life. So let's thank God for Kephas. But at least what he is saying is is true. We should hear not just a Kepha. I go in church the Bible and no, and I don't know. You know, Jesus Oma, we come Jesus. Now you come Jesus. No, the Bible I am paying one cent per tint. No, now so Jesus will no abuaye. Timu mi encha ye. When you find a thief in your institution. Taking him out. So that your whole institution is not destroyed. This is Kephas. Don't be afraid to offend him. Offense is not bitterness. No matter what we do, offenses will come. Sometimes if you don't want to offend like Eli, you will lose the whole future. Tell me, be a one person walk from Senia. So for a year, no pay. One year, another day, another show. You spare the rod. You spoil the child. So, oh, grow up, ah, oh, be say, oh, ba. You spare the rod. You spoil the family. So, oh, grow up, ah, oh, be to me and say, oh, You spare the rod. You spoil the organization. So, oh, grow up, ah, oh, be to me and say, oh, You spare the rod. You disturb the future. So, oh, grow up, ah, oh, be to me. I say that channel. It is impossible that offenses should not come. So never say that. As for me, I will never offend anyone. Sometimes the man who took you to who supported you in the university. You should say no to him. Say no to him. Say no to him. The one who took care of you when you were at the university, when he comes back, that you should pay him, find money and pay him. But not if your body. Don't cheat on your husband. Now don't cheat on your wife. So don't entertain that man's advances. Say no to him. Can one say our ear in the men so sauce up a pano, not brabo, and then a dear no so can there be trim? Now you have to be careful. So show who you pa. I don't want to offend this man. Say, hmm, man, can say, wait, dear man, Pesce may be a tiano, but you want to offend God. Yeah, now Pesce of whom and Yanko Pong. Fear God. Slow Eurade. Shall we rise in prayer? Shall we rise in prayer? Wherever you are, I want you to pray. And then resolve in your heart that if there's someone that you want to please, let it be God. Paul says that if I still please men, I will not be a servant of Christ. In our walk in this life, certainly, certainly, we may have we may have to step on a toe. 
Don't say. As for me, I will never offend anyone. If that one man wants you to offend God, offend the man and connect with God. Shall we pray? If for any reason you need to repent of any action, Please do, please repent. Lift up your voice wherever you are. Let's ask God Jesus. for forgiveness. In any area that we have compromised on our convictions. Begin to pray.